ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਤਾਸਰ ਬਹੁਤ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਸਿੱਖਣ ਟੀਮ ਪਹੁੰਚੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਟ੍ਰਿਨੀਡਾਡ ਐਂਡ ਅਸੀਂ ਹੁਣ ਇੱਥੇ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰੇ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਵੀ ਪਹੁੰਚੇ ਹੈਗੇ ਟ੍ਰਿਨੀਡਾਡ ਟਬੇਗੋ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਾ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਇਨ ਸੈਂਟਰਲ ਟ੍ਰਿਨੀਡਾਡ ਸਾਨਾ ਜੁਰੀਓ ਹੈਗੇ ਜੀਵਨ ਹਰਦੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀਵਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਹਰਦੀਤ ਹੈਗਾ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਡੈਡੀ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਪਿਤਾ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਸਾਂਝ ਜੀ ਆਇਆ ਕਰੀਏ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਸੀਕ ਚੈਨਲ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਫॉर ਹੈਵਿੰਗ ਮੀ ਫॉर ਥਿਸ ਇੰਟਰਵਿਊ ਜੀਵਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਡੂ ਸਪੀਕ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਆਈ ਡੂ ਨਾਟ ਸਪੀਕ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਬਟ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਬੀਨ ਅ ਸਿੱਖ ਫਰਮ ਸਿੰਸ ਬਰਥ ਥੈਟਸ ਅਮੇਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਟੈਲ ਅਸ ਅ ਲਿਟਲ ਬਿਟ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਯੋਰ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਹਿਸਟਰੀ ਲੈਟਸ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਵਿਦ ਯੋਰ ਗ੍ਰੈਂਡ ਫਾਦਰ ਸ਼ੇਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਹੂ ਆਈ ਬਿਲੀਵ ਕੇਮ ਇਨ 1890 ਟੂ ਟ੍ਰਿਨੀਡਾਡ my grandfather shah singh s h e r singh came to trinidad from northern india i understand in the punjab area he came here at a tender age of 20 or so and resided at these premises in trinidad at 264 eastern main road tunapuna where he lived here for many years and they started off a gurdwara in trinidad my understanding is that it's the first in the western hemisphere and he and other members of the family continued with this gurdwara in a very small way the congregation at that time was pretty small just a handful of people mainly family members and they continued in a very humble way here small premises um no running water and so on rental premises from the Orange Grove estate at $6 per annum was the rental at that point in time my grandfather Shah Singh eventually got married at these very premises at 264 Eastern Main Road to Napuna Trinidad and had four wonderful children four boys my dad Hardit Singh was the first the second was siwa singh then mewa singh and the last was sharma singh unfortunately the mother of these four boys died when the last son was just about 6 months old after a marriage of just 9 10 years or so unfortunately again my grandfather shah singh became blind around 1918 1919 and there was no one here to take care of him so he left the shores of trinidad and tobago and returned to india where he had family in north northern india who were able to, t- to take care of him he continued living there blind and died subsequently in the year of 1959 My father at a very tender age at these very premises took over the reins of taking care of the family in a, in a very humble way and started a business called Turban Brand Products Limited at a tender age of 18 in the year 1929 together with that he continued with his very small manufacturing industry of curry powder coffee chocolate black pepper etc etc and continued pushing the religion the sikh religion to the community in a very small manner in because at that point in time you did not have very many folks or indians coming out of india and they continued with a small building here for many years until he eventually um contacted the indian high commission in the late 40s and they would send a grantee here on the first sunday of each month because they met at that time one sunday in the month the first sunday in the month and that went on for very many years the congregation as i said was just a, a handful of people 10 15 folks more family members and they all assisted to make sure that the 
the functions and the prayer meetings were well taken care of. Subsequently, the first resident of this, at, this, at these premises was a gentleman called Himraj Singh. He came here in the 1860s and as I said, followed by my grandfather in the 1880s. He passed away in 1947, meaning Himraj Singh. So the entire responsibility was left to other members of the family, including my father, who was really um, a leading figure in taking care of the Gurdwara and making sure that things were in, were in order. There was assistance from other folks like Karam Singh and Gurmukh Singh and other members of the family. Uh, they had reached a point here with the Gurdwara in the 1960s, 1961, where it became necessary that the lands of the Gurdwara be purchased. My father, having moved from these premises to his new business premises one mile away from here at 188 Eastern Main Road, Tunapuna, purchased the lands from the Trinidad Orange Grove Sugar Estates, whose head office was in London, England. I don't recall the price he paid for it. And then there was a restructuring. He did a restructuring in 1929 at age 18 from his own personal finance before he purchased the land in 1960. So as a young man at 18 years old, he did some restructuring of the building, as I am showing you here with this. And this is what we would call a, a magnanimous building in those days, right? <laughs> now we have, a, we have a real edifice here today, thanks to all the folks who have contributed. People like Dave Dougal, our first president, and all the other members, Gurbal, we have our new president, the professor, Chanan Singh Sian, from England, who is doing a wonderful job, who has, who has replaced now uh, my good friend, Dave Dougal, who joined me here in the early 1970s. My dad died in 1962, July of 1962. I was uh, around 18 years of age, and I took over the mantle, as we will say, to ensure that this Gurdwara moves from strength to strength and into perpetuity. In a very small way that I could have, I did not know much of the religion and I depended on so many other people at that point in time. Dave Dougal and his wife Sushil were very instrumental in their guidance from the early 70s. But from 62 to 1973, 74, I sort of led the way as a young man and when the more prominent folks who had more religious knowledge of the organization came into being we continued discussing with each other over the years and our image and thoughts were to get a Gurdwara that will be famous in the Western Hemisphere and Dave Dougal was a leading force in that direction we got contributions from the community. Many people contributed thousands of dollars. And today, I'm happy to say that in November of 2002, this Gurdwara here at 264 Eastern Main Road, Tunapuna, was opened. And the congregation and the audience has increased tremendously. We now meet, instead of meeting once per month, which is the first Sunday in every month, where we have met for so many decades. We now meet now every Sunday in the month and things are moving up better and better and progressing. And I feel happy for that because I think that was, that was the wish of my father, members of the community, members of the congregation and all the present members now. They want to see this thing progress and blossom, right? And I thank everybody who has participated and who are now participating, and I look forward to this religion 
and to our organization in Trinidad and Tobago to move from strength to strength. Is there anything else you would like Thank to you add? very much, uh, Jeevan Singh. I'd like to go back to your grandfather and father. Yes. How strong was their attachment to the Sikh faith? Were they Sardars? Did they wear turban and beard? My grandfather, I have a picture of him, as a matter of fact, in my car. He wore a turban with the beard, with the car and everything. But being a, a new generation Trinidadian, my father, <laughs> at the end of the day, started to shave his beard and look, as you say, like me, and did not wear a turban in the later years of his life. And would you like to connect back to your roots? Would you consider wearing a turban again? Would you like to go back to your grandfather's heritage and his persona? And as we say, being a Sardar and uh, the image of a Sikh. I continue with the image of a Sikh. I follow the Sikh religion. I do not wear the beard and I do not wear the turban. But I'm a follower of the faith and I believe in the faith. I'm not a fanatic of the faith. I'm being open with you, but I follow the faith, right? Um, there are others who are fanatical in their approach to the religion. I have no problem with that. I follow the faith as much as I can, and I look forward to continue doing that for the rest of my life. It's very good, and you've been serving the Godwara and the community for many, many decades, which is tremendous. And in terms of language, because obviously your grandfather and father, they, your father spoke Punjabi. Yes, my, my grandfather spoke it fluently. He did not speak English fluently. My father spoke Punjabi and he spoke English fluently. I do not speak Punjabi. I speak English, I, I hope, fluently. You speak great English, very good English, Jeevan. And we've met other people as well who have a similar story where their grandparents and parents came a long time ago. They've lost the Punjabi language skills. Would you like to see uh, Punjabi language reintroduced back into Trinidad into some of the Sikh families to help them connect to their heritage and faith? I would love to see the religion move from strength to strength, whether it's by the teaching of the language, whether it's by the customs and the cultural uh, diversity of the religion and the people of India. And um, I am seeing that it's taking place. The young ones now are being taught at the Gurdwara and we are opening, we are opening all the doors for them. And I am happy to see that. That's tremendous. And in terms of the community here, because it's such a small community, the Sea community, there's, lo there's lots of mixed communities as well and mixed marriages. Do they work? Do you think if people marry outside of the Sikh faith, a partner from another religion or community, can they keep a strong connection to the, to the Sikh community and Sikh faith? They do. Even if, even if there's intermarriage, whether you, married, you get married into the Christian faith or you, or you get married to a Hindu or Muslim, they all participate in the religious affairs are the Sikh Gurdwara. They may very well be going to their own churches, but they still come and participate. And that's a tremendous, tremendous thing, you know? Because we are, we, are a, we are a cultural nation here with a diverse set of religious and um, other roots, you know? Religious roots and uh, racial roots. And we have all sorts of races here all sorts of religions here, but we integrate and we are all, as we say, one. We do not discriminate. What do you consider yourself? Your grandfather was from the Punjab, a Sardar and Sikh, and you are now very much based here in Trinidad. Do you still consider yourself Punjabi or do you consider yourself more Trinidadian or a mix? I am Trinidadian of Indian descent, North Indian descent. Right? But I am Trinidadian, born in Trinidad and Tobago. And your children, the next generation of your family, have they kept a connection to their, the roots uh, laid down by their grandfather and your father? Yes. I have two children, Shakira, who resides in New York State, in a, 
in the United States and my son Shiva who resides in Trinidad. Shiva follows the faith, maybe not as religiously as some people would want him to, but he follows the faith and he comes to the Gurdwara and does his part. Like so many other young folks, you know, and I am very happy for that. I'm happy for, for being interviewed here today to tell you how, how grateful I feel for this interview and to know that so many people over the hundred and so many years have done their part to ensure that this good war survives. Because over the years from eight, the 1880s until today, January 26th, 2019, we have had formidable obstacles one way or the other and we have been able to overcome them. And when you're a small organization, you tend to have more obstacles than other well-secured organizations. But we are on the road to, to progress and to ensure that nothing is in our way to make sure that this Gurdwara continues from strength to strength. That's tremendous. And going back to the business, the Turban brand, can you tell us about the business? That was a very successful enterprise. Did it grow? What was the, uh, the scale of the business? And how did your father do with that? My father started this business at these premises here at the Gurdwara. This is why I have such tremendous thoughts and feelings for these premises. He was born at these premises. He grew up at these premises and he started his business, Turban Brand Products Limited, in the year 1929. With a very small mill, one person riding his bicycle, grinding his spices, and going on his bicycle and selling in the community until he progressed from a bicycle to a, a, a vehicle and then he moved from these premises when the business expanded and went about a mile from here at 188 Eastern Main Road to Napuna and established a pretty good establishment of, of manufacturing various spices, curry powder, coffee, cocoa, cocoa butter, tea bags, etc. etc. over the years. My dad died at a very tender age of 51 in July of 1962. My brother Nanak Hardit Singh was 19 years old and I was Jeevan Hardit Singh who was 18 years old at the time. We took over the business and carried it on from there. And um, if you need any more information on that, I will let you know. What is your business today? Are you still in the same business? If you look at the color of my hair, you'll realize that it's no longer black. It's totally gray. And someone says to me, if you do not know when to stop, something will stop you. So uh, at the age of 75, you see I'm doing more sitting than standing. <laughs> I take it easy now, and I'm now 90% retired. Thank you very much. Jeevan Hardit Singh, your grandfather was a founder of the well, not the Godwara in Trinidad, but a founder of a Godwara Sahib, one of the first Godwara Sahib outside of India in, uh, at the turn of the century, in 1901. So it's an amazing achievement, and you've kept alive that family history. You've shown great commitment to the Godwara and to your Sikh roots. We hope that the coming generations, your children and their children, will continue to keep this connection. Do you think it's important to keep that connection and how can we ensure they do keep a connection because the world is changing so fast? I am certain with the guidance that my family and friends and all the people who support the Gurdwara here in Trinidad and Tobago, that this Gurdwara will be supported and it will move from strength to strength. With the guidance of our past president, Dave Dougal, our present President, Professor Chanan Singh, Sian, and all the other members 
of the executive committee, trustees, and all the organizing members. I look forward to it, and I'm certain in my mind that when we move on, others will take our place, and we will be happy for that. Do you feel any sense of loss or any sense of uh, loss of any part of your family with your grandfather and father when they went on their next journey? Has the family dynamics changed? Have you, because you're now part of the Trinidadian society and it's a modern world, do you think there's been a transition in the family history and the family makeup? Because they were from a different era, they had a different uh, connection to the Sikh faith and now you have a different connection. Do you think you've lost something when they passed? I, I, I would say that I have not lost anything, but I do not know as much as they knew about the religion. But I am doing my part and doing as much as, as I can. I'm not a fanatic of the religion, but I am doing my part and hoping that other people follow in my footsteps, in my grandfather's footsteps, in my father's footsteps, and all the other people who have participated. Would you like to learn more? Would you like to take more time? Or is that one of your wishes to try and learn more about the Sikh faith and more about what inspired your grandfather to start this Gurdwara Sahib? Yes, I would like to, and I'm doing that in, as time goes on. I am. That's tremendous. And the Sikh channel, that's our mission. Our tagline is to bring millions of Sikhs together around the world and to bring them closer to their faith and connect them in a very moderate and modern way. And uh, we'll be very pleased to involve you in some of our broadcast and keep a connection to the Trinidad Sikh community and help facilitate anybody who wants to learn more to come closer to their faith. That would be great. And we'll be very pleased to, to do that and partner with you. And any final words you'd like to say to the global Sikh community? What I would like to say is that this is a religion that was founded so many years ago by Guru Nanak. And it has survived the passage of time. And it is growing from strength to strength. And I am certain that it is going to expand all over the world. And we are going to have, we are going to have followers that you, you will be you'll be surprised of in so many years to come because the Sikh community is a very formidable community they are a strong willing um, with a lot of resourcefulness behind them there are people who do not give up they persevere I, I see it in them I don't know what it is why and how I do not know but I can tell you in the average Sikh that I have met it is somebody that you would admire and want to be part of their, of their life and lifestyle as against so many other groups in this world today. We are a handful in terms of population, but we are a giant in terms of other things. That's amazing, inspirational words from Jeevan Hardit Singh, the grandson of the founder of the first Godwara Sahib, not only here in Trinidad, but in the Western world. This Godwara was founded at the turn of the century in 1901. Uh, well, sorry, actually in 1880 is the, the actual start date of the Godwara Sahib in 1880. And then it became more formalized at the turn of the century and later on was rebuilt. And uh, it's an amazing story. And we can see the passion inside Jeevan Singh and it's very inspiring. Thank you very much for welcoming the Sea Channel team here to Trinidad. Thank you very much. I do thank you so kindly. I do, I do thank you so kindly for taking the interest in this religion and coming to Trinidad to interview us. And I, I do appreciate it. And on behalf of the entire Sikh community and Trinidad and Tobago, I thank you so kindly. Uh, thank you very much. Wahiguruji ka khalsa. Wahiguruji.